Hey there, welcome to day two. In this one, we're gonna be talking about numbers, variables, and strings. Now these are pretty fundamental to Python, and there's actually a lot of detail we can go into all of them, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm actually gonna give you the fundamentals of what you need, and we're gonna build on it with this entire series. Now what we need to do is open up the Python shell so we can actually test some of these ideas out, and we wanna do it together. Now, the easiest way for you to do it is by opening up idle, which is what we downloaded when we downloaded Python in day one. So if you go into your applications and you scroll down to Python 3.8, you're gonna go ahead and open up idle. Now, idle, of course, looks like this. And this is the Python shell. It's already in there and it's already working. Now, I'm actually not gonna be using idle for the remainder of this series. Idle is okay, but it's not as good as using the command line interface. So the command line allows us to do all sorts of things beyond just Python, where idle only allows us to do Python. But I wanna get you in the habit, if you're willing, to using what a real programmer would be doing, which is the terminal, or if you're on Windows, it's PowerShell. So let's go ahead and close out of idle. And I want you to go in your applications and scroll down to utilities. And then in utilities, you're gonna find another program called terminal. So go ahead and open that up. And what you'll see is something similar to this. More likely you'll see, let's say this one right here. And that's totally okay. I just made some customizations to mine to make it blue like this for the recording. Now, of course, if you're on Windows, you're gonna hit the Start menu, type out PowerShell, open up the PowerShell application. This is our command line on Windows. And we're just gonna go ahead and type out Python 3. That, of course, is an error. So you just type out Python, and what do you know? There's Python 3.8.2. Now, back on our Mac, we're actually gonna do the opposite of that, and I'm gonna type out Python, and I'm gonna get a warning saying Python 2.7.16 and also Python 2.7 is just not recommended. So that's okay. This is where sometimes working on a Mac or a Windows, it might get a little confusing, but no worries. We can just exit out of that. And just remember, if you're on a Mac, you're gonna to wanna to type out Python 3. If you're on a Windows, you're just gonna type out Python. And to exit out of the shell, you just type exit and put two parentheses there and press enter. So let's go ahead and clear this out and let's actually get started learning about integers. So let's go into the Python shell by typing out Python 3. And again, I'm in terminal, but you can absolutely use idle if you want. And now I've got Python 3 up. Now it makes no surprise that uh, computers are fast at doing computation. That is, they're good at doing math. So if I did 10 plus 10, it would answer that very quickly. And if I make the number even bigger, it will also do that very quickly. And of course, I can get to these previous numbers by pressing the up or down arrow. That actually allows me to access older things that have happened inside of this Python shell, which is nice, even all the way back to exit, right? Okay, so pressing up and down is something you'll also get used to because the command line interface, we just simply can't you know, use our mouse. That's the purpose of the command line interface. It's literally, you have to write every single command. This is true on PowerShell and Terminal. Okay, so back into Python 3, let's do some more math. I'm gonna go ahead and do some multiplication. Now notice the star there. Doing that star between two numbers will multiply those two numbers. No surprise there. And I know that math is like so, so interesting to you, but right here is how you do division, okay? And then to do exponents, it's really simple. You just use two stars. And then of course you can get the root of something by using two stars and then a fraction of some kind. And that will give you the, like in this case, it's the square root of it. Um, but what we wanna think about when it comes to using math is not always just the calculations because looking up how to do these calculations is really easy to do, right? If you wanna be able to round a number, for example, you can look up how to do that. Um, I'm gonna just show you real quick. You will import something called math, and then you'll do math.floor. This will round it down, and let's do five. And don't worry if you aren't catching up to this one, but I just wanted to show you this example that rounds it down. Okay, so there are all sorts of things like this in Python, and it's impossible to remember all of them. What you wanna remember is that 
hey, every once in a while, I'm gonna run into a problem and I have to think about what is it that I'm trying to do, right? So if I was using this as an example, I'd be like, hey, I want to round this number down. So I would search how to round down in Python, something like that in Google or on stackoverflow.com. Those two things are gonna become your very good friends because it will help you solve the problems that you face when you face them. Right, and a couple other things that are problems that we see right now are this syntax error thing and this name error thing. Stuff we'll absolutely see again, um, but the idea with the math portion is that, yes, you can do math and Python treats numbers as you would expect. They treat them as numbers. This is in contrast to strings. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this shell again, and I'm gonna clear everything out, and I'm gonna go ahead and type out Python 3. Now what I wanna do is actually show you what a string is. So if I put a number in a quote, right? So I've got double quotes here, and I go ahead and try and do multiplication here with an actual number, and I hit enter, it actually multiplies the, like the value that many times, but it's not doing the number. Instead, what it's doing is it's just repeating that string that many times. An easier way to see this is if I said hello world inside of parentheses and I multiplied that by three. Now it's showing me three instances of hello world, right? So Python can absolutely multiply strings and numbers, but strings are usually just a set of characters. So whether it's a letter or a number inside of quotations, that's single quotes or double quotes. Either way, if it's in there, that is a string. So strings have very similar properties to numbers as you can multiply it as we've seen. You can also add it to another and you'll see stuff like this. And you're like, well, hey, wait a minute. I just added three words together, but it ended up being two words kind of, like world another is not a word, but it's together like one word. And that's because Python is very serious about spacing. Actually, in general, a lot of programming languages, when it comes to using strings, it's very serious about spacing. So if I said hello world, and then I added a space, I would actually see something like this. And of course, what I just wrote out is sort of nonsense because I should just type out um, hello world another like that. I shouldn't actually be adding these strings together. So it doesn't really make sense in this context, but it's more about understanding the things that are going on. Now we will do a lot of stuff with strings, but the point of what I wanted to get here was that strings and numbers are different. They still work in similar ways in the sense that if I wanted to duplicate a string X number of times or N number of times, I can do that with something this simple. If I wanna bring two strings together, I could do that with something this simple, this simple, or I could just write out the string altogether. So this is just fundamental things. Now, the biggest question is like, how do I move this data around without retyping it? And that's where variables come in. So let's say for instance, I wanted to say my phrase is, and that's what we want to see then I would be able to use this phrase by just typing out the variable name again, right? So in this case, I declared a variable and I set it equal to some value. That value can be all sorts of things. In this case, the value is a string, but it can also be a number, right? And I can set that equal to an actual number or a string of numbers, right? So the number times some other number will give me some value. Num2 times three will repeat that number or that string that many times, okay? So these variables mean that I can now move them around throughout my application. And that is actually really important. You'll use variables, strings, and numbers a lot through all of your applications. So even if it's like still a little uncomfortable as to where we're at, it will definitely start to make a lot more sense as we use these things a lot more. Now, before I go away, I wanna actually show you a couple more things about strings that are important to note. So I exit out of the shell and I'm right back in there. And I'll go ahead and say, hello world. This is a quote, awesome 
time. Okay, so this is a valid string. Like I would actually want to use this somewhere sometimes, right? I wanna actually have quotes in there. But if I hit enter, I get this syntax error. And that's because whenever you want to have a string, you need to open it with a quote, but you also need to close it with a quote. But what happens when you need those double quotes inside of a string? Well, this is an example of something we need to use escaping for. Now escaping means that we just throw a slash right in front of it, just like that. And it's really that simple. Now our actual value of that string allows for those quotes to be in there. And that's also true for single quotes, right? I've been using double ones, but if I say hello world, another slash quote is here, that will do that same sort of thing. One of the ways to get around this is by using double or a single quote on the outside. So I say hello world and then double quotes on the inside. That actually sort of get, gets around it, but I would recommend that you use best practice and actually just escape your quotes in general. Now again, this is another example of like, hey, I hit this syntax error and I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. This is a good time to ask one of those questions. You just post it in the comments below and, and I can help clarify this or if you know the answer to somebody else's, you could help clarify it as well. Now strings have some other built-in features to them like line breaks. Like let's say for instance, I wanna have multiple lines like hello world. So notice that there's a slash in in there and that's what I see. But if I actually print out using this print statement, I'll talk about that in a second, it actually prints it in two lines. So this is a way of formatting strings. We're gonna go into more string formatting later, uh, but for right now, the idea here is that strings have features that you can use in them to make them a little bit better of uh, usability as far as a Python program is concerned, right? So if I printed this out inside of my program, it would print it out in two lines versus just printing it out in one like we've been doing. Okay, so that's some of the basics of integers, variables, and strings. Now again, we are gonna be building a lot off of this stuff. So just keep that in mind. And also look in the comments below for links to the reference code. So the reference code meaning everything in general that we've been typing. It's not gonna be literally what we've been typing, but references to what we've been typing. So you can absolutely have something that you know, you can refer back to and be like, okay, oh, well, this is how I do multiplication. And then this is how I do division, right? So for that, that's the end of day two. We'll see you tomorrow.